there, welcome in. This is Cleo Ra and this is my Loot Lounge where I like to help people get aligned with their highest timeline and flow towards all those things that are already stored for them in their vortex. For those of you who listen to Abraham Hicks, you'll know what I mean by that. So let's get on and we're gonna see what the message is. I've been told to do a Celtic cross and I've also been told that someone is emerging into a state of high flying majesty okay that word high flying is very important here i'm getting hawk energy coming through i'm getting eagle energy and there's also a, a precious gem energy i don't know if someone's been visiting somewhere where you can find opals maybe australia something like that but there's something to do with diamonds or mining Finding the gems, this could be physically or non-physically because we can find lots of beautiful non-physical gems when we tune our consciousness and our frequency to certain levels, we get loot non-physically. So someone could be getting a real piece of gold. It's, it almost looks to me like golden chocolate that's been broken off. It's like you're getting a chunk of gold. This is etheric, I feel. I feel like someone's getting a revelation that's gonna make their life really easy and make them realize where they belong or what the next step is. We've got the Six of Swords energy as the central energy here. So this is all about following your internal guidance, that inner voice. You know, you've had a spirit guide with you from the moment you were born, at least one, and also an angelic protector also. But I feel like now, okay, they're telling me that I was mentioning that because you're combining them both together. There's something about you where you're combining two sides of you together. This could be two projects getting combined or a part of you that likes art, maybe mixing it in with something else. There's something about combining two parts of you into one and making the channel stronger. Let's see what's going on here. Five of pentacles as the crowning energy. So you could feel like you've got to do something completely alone here. We've got the nine of wands also. So yeah, this is an energy of someone who's tuned in completely to the non-physical because someone's let them down or they feel like they haven't got anything to rely on other than their internal guidance system. Nine of wands energy is defensive. It's an energy and this energy is underlying everything here, this nine of wands. This energy of having gone so far and fought so many battles here. We've got eight strong battles behind this figure. And he's holding onto his wand like, I have to hold this positioning. I cannot go any further. I've done everything I can do. I've been ripped up. I've been betrayed. I've been, you know, I'm hearing some words here that I don't want to sound a tarot video. Okay, violated. I'm going to switch the words up if they're a little bit too triggering. All right, because this nine of wands is someone who's been on a pathway that they've been loyal to for so long. Yeah, I'm hearing I get knocked down, but I get up again. You've been knocked down so many times. I'm hearing a million times you've been knocked down. Now, spirits giving me energies, pink energies, purple energies, and blue energies. And they're giving me blue ray energy. They're, they're sending through a huge amount of affection for somebody here, particularly with the pink color. Uh, similar to the light I've got on now because someone's been through it and they've really had to hold their ground. The Nine of Wands is the wounded warrior. Someone who just has to keep going and has to keep going and has to find that little bit of strength. But you're doing it for the sovereignty. I'm getting this energy of you're doing it for the sovereignty because you have to. There's no other way you can turn here. You have to get to the Ten of Wands and then break through into regality. That's what the Nine of Wands leads us to. So I'm speaking to someone who's had to do a huge amount of things on their own. Okay, then we've got the Fool energy here. Because this Five of Pentacles isn't giving me major frightful energies. This Five of Pentacles is giving me energy of someone who's always been alone, always been attacked, always have had people knocking them down, always had to pick themselves up alone. I'm getting your consciousness has been into that abyss to the dregs and you have to keep picking yourself up. So I feel like this next step for you is easy with the full energy. There's a beautiful burst of fresh radiant energy here. And I feel like you're consolidating all of your knowledge here. Something's getting wrapped up nicely. This is an energy of knowing where you stand and allowing the universe to guide you to wherever you truly belong because you're following your immortal guidance system here with the full energy breaking through into true majesty and i feel like your instincts are getting tied up lined up there's something about this bag and this dog here that energy of two things again guiding you the primality the instinct 
mixed with all your past life experience all of these instincts that flow through into your soul maybe you don't even know where you get them from where you get them from this little handbag this little loot bag that's been coming with your soul through every incarnation on this cosmic stage so this is uranus energy aquarius energy you're breaking through here and you know this fool is walking down the mountain so it feels to me like a dam has burst something has been released this could be like lancing you know something that has to get the poison out of it because this is all downhill now this is all smooth sailing and allowing your soul to flow in a happy harmonic way now the full energy is also about trusting the universe because most humans never break through to this full energy most humans never get their mind up into the clouds and get themselves into that position where they truly trust the universe enough to look crazy because they're operating alongside their inner child in that pureness in that frequency of trusting what's to come we've got the six of pentacles here so I'm speaking to someone who's very aware that the universe has always helped them out. And now we can see why. Because we've got this high priestess energy here. An energy of solitude, of being pulled back from the crowds, of being pulled back from mainstream society. Of having to keep a neutral positioning when it comes to what other humans are doing. So this is a reading for somebody who's always had this frequency from the day you were born you had the frequency of a high priestess. And so often in ancient times, anyone who was picked for a role, when it came to a sacred role or a shamanic role, they were always separated out. From a young age, you know, they were always noted for their unique energy and for the frequency that they held being so pure and to, it was set apart from the rest. You know, we all feel other people's energies and your energy has always been set apart from the rest. And I feel like that's why this is easy for you now with this Nine of Wands, Five of Pentacles. I'm hearing this is your baseline state, being out in the cold, being a warrior, having to defend yourself. So it's easy for you to go through these. This is like Assassin's Creed hitman energy where you've always had this from a young age. As much as the High Priestess can be demure, she can be tuned to anything. The High Priestess is a human aerial. She doesn't need to just stay even in the frequency of the High Priestess. Even when she jumps from one bubble of consciousness to another, she can always go back to her home base of the soul, which is the High Priestess. But what people have got to understand is often the high priestess doesn't look like the high priestess because she can jump into other energies that extend out from her over soul from her higher self and this is part of her adaptability this is part of the adaptability needed to get through these most hardened states of being i'm getting that you were born in a saturnian territory pluto saturn neptune elevated but challenged people think it's fun being elevated away from the crowds away from the low-hanging fruit, away from the bottom of the pyramid energetically, but actually sitting at the top of the pyramid and being born into the underworld, into Pluto territory, where you've got to be a very ambitious soul, but you've also got to be very adaptable. And I feel like this is why this is coming up. Someone's had to adapt constantly, scene to scene throughout their lifetime. So it's easy for them to hopscotch, to jump, from one conscious positioning to another, this high priestess has had to hide the fact that she's a high priestess by allowing herself to perhaps look foolish or childlike or allowing herself to flow with the divine, no matter what that may mean. Even if it makes her look bad, she's got to follow her sacred principles and hold her positioning. So this is kind of like an energy of someone who is such a good high priestess, they can switch into any lens of consciousness like a voodoo doll, like a human aerial. And this person, whoever I'm reading to, your, your connection with the universe is so phenomenal that it means that you don't need to deal with earthbound people very often. There's a lot of rejecting people, rejecting people, rejecting people. You can't operate at the bottom of the tree of life consciously. You can't deal with people who are tuned to the basic earthly principles because you were born... I'm getting a cavern, a cavern coming through. You were born in this cavern, this elevated but challenged cavern where on the earth you're going to be challenged because there aren't people around anymore to protect the high priestesses. We've had a lot of our books burnt, a lot of our things lost and forgotten. 
but you are someone who's taken on a heavy load of being such a pure channel here to make up for lost time, to make up for all of the things that humans have lost. You've had to come in and be the most multidimensional, most multifaceted, most ingenious, most camouflaged, most shape-shifty, multidimensional being. And I'm getting a real childlike energy here that is dichotomous to this seriousness we've got with the High Priestess. She's got to do it. She's got to be able to shift and she's got to be able to move. And that's what I'm getting here. Knight of Swords energy is real quick movement. And then we've got the Seven of Swords here. So it looks to me like there's something going on where this High Priestess is, is having to really kind of walk away from something or reconfigure something. This is an energy of recalibration, retuning a revamp, a fresh start. You've got to be good at fresh starts when you have to reject a lot of connections that come along, when you have to keep yourself at a certain frequency, constantly regenerating. I'm getting a cocoon in my mind, but they're showing me this in fast forward. There's a constant regeneration. I'm seeing this cocoon peeling, the layers coming off, and then a new creature born. And it happens over and over again. For someone who is this elevated, for someone who is this evolved, it's not hard for you to go through the death process over and over again throughout one year. A death cycle for a high priestess can happen overnight. It can happen in one minute. Time is relative and our frequencies are very unique. The way we can skip and move through timelines, that's what I'm getting here with this Seven of Swords. This is almost like a quantum leap with someone who's got to maintain their positioning at all times. They're showing me a queen on the chessboard here. So the queen has to maintain eight to the nine. The queen has to maintain her positioning or the king has to maintain his positioning. So we've got quick movement from... Eight of Cups kind of energies. Maybe you've been leaving a cycle recently. I'm getting an energy of you having to tie up the loose ends and kind of evacuate a situation. This could be an emotional purging, tying up the old storyline, letting it lie, letting it kind of be what it bees, and then bang, we're moving into the Nine of Cups here. Moving forward into that energy of satiety. And I'm getting the energy here with the High Priestess of someone who... Because they've come through with their immortal consciousness, they don't see things the way humans see it. They don't see things in the same way. There's a peacefulness here of knowing that the main thing is to tune yourself into the energy of wish fulfillment and knowing that that's going to keep you in the right life, essentially. Wish fulfillment is the key to this high priestess staying in a cocooned, beautiful cavern where all of her rareness and her uniqueness can be protected because the gems have to be protected. That's what I'm getting here. So there's huge efforts coming in from non-physical right now to move this high priestess into the right conscious state because everything starts with the mind and then where the mind goes, the body follows. So there's a relaxation here and a quick reshifting into true majesty they just keep giving me that true majesty true majesty let's have a look they want me to start with the full energy <laughs> the full clarified by the full and you know it's funny this one's looking this way and that one's looking that way again that energy of two guides coming into one right so that could mean different things to different people this is an energy of two becoming one so it could be the animal nature mi mixing with the higher nature Blending into one conscious point of focus. But there's also an, a back-to-back -back energy here. Where these two are stood back-to-back. -back, blending into one. This could be becoming one flesh. For somebody. But there's definitely two guides. Being brought into one focus point. Let's see. Five of Pentacles energy here. Double sun. Also they're telling me there's two suns on this card. Double blessings. Double abundance. Double power. There's something about teaming up here, a quick recalibration, four of cups with the five of pentacles. So we've got the four of cups twice here. And again, that energy of, oh, it's funny. It's almost like two energies that are agreeing to disagree. Two energies that are back to back, but pushing away from each other. There's almost like a magnetism here. Something has to make sure the magnetism is smooth. So yeah, I'm getting rejection as God's protection, but it's also recalibration, right? 
We don't play hands we can't win. Not in the poker world, not when you're as good at poker as you are at tarot. We fold every hand we can't win. So I'm getting the quicker you fold the hand, the quicker you can be dealt a new one, right? And this time you're being dealt a new hand with this full alignment with the purity of your guidance system in your majesty flowing down the right river. I'm getting this is you flowing down the right river. Page of Wands energy here. Full focus again on what is fun to you, exciting. There's a cute childlike energy here. Refocusing on the fun times, the giggling and just remembering what life is all about. Life is about finding those things that bring you joy that inflame you there's this energy of focusing on one thing with the page of wands and that that power being powerful enough to create a whole new storyline for you in your gorgeous life they're showing me a magnifying glass where you capture the sun and you project the sun's energy through the magnifying glass and it creates a burning laser type effect so again you're taking something and turning it into something else two sons i'm getting for some reason they just keep saying two sons six of pentacles show me what's this beautiful aid from the universe ace of cups the purity of love getting back to what really matters climbing back up to the top of the tree of life switching your crown on getting that halo flowing and getting love filling up every cell of your body this is what's coming here the power of love i'm getting frankie goes to hollywood let yourself be beautiful and i feel like someone really is harnessing their power, pulling from the higher self in a laser-like way with that magnifying glass. They also show me ants. You know when, you know, you get torturous young boys killing ants with their magnifying glass. They're saying lions, they don't hang around worrying about the opinions of ants or the opinions of spiteful little boys. So that will have some meaning to somebody Two of Wands with the Nine of Wands. Okay, making plans from this beautiful cocooned positioning. I'm seeing a log fire burning. Okay, a tree house could mean something to somebody. This could be like a temple that you go to. Yeah, hermit energy. Wow, you're powerful. Hermit with the high priestess. You've got it all. And again, that back-to-back -back energy. The feminine flow, the divine feminine. And also, you could see the hermit as being more masculine as the sage energy, the wisdom keeper holding all these beautiful gems and secrets inside. I'm getting that cozy energy. They're showing me Moroccan lamps, Istanbul kind of energy, that gorgeous magic, Arabian magic could mean something to somebody. Zoroastrianism could mean something to somebody. And also somebody, someone could be buying new incense. I'm hearing frankincense as well. We've got the Ten of Wands with the Four of Cups. Yes, yeah, someone would rather move there we are, nine of wands to ten of wands. Someone knows this is the only way to say in your majesty, you've got to do the work. There are no shortcuts. So you could be really doing something to really move your energy here with the ten of wands because this is doing something that is a challenge. And that word keeps coming up in this reading. You're doing something that's a challenge, but you're doing it because you have to do it. You've got the passion. This is sovereign, divine challenge. This isn't just any old 3D challenge. This is a challenge that lights up your higher self someone would rather reject uh you know there's something about second place here there's something about half measures someone would rather reject half measures and wait for the fullness of their cup to be filled up to be filled up than take something right now four of cups there's work to be done and the work will be done and it's being done with vigor and strength devil energy with the knight of swords so again with the seven of swords devil energy knight of swords someone's very determined to get this fountain of love switched on the crown chakra flowing beautifully making your plans from this elevated initiate level consciousness hermit with the high priestess priestess this is gorgeous absolutely beautiful your plans are going to be ferociously divine beautifully magnanimous and this is the energy of someone who can change the whole timeline the energy of someone who's got it all you can change the whole future we're moving into for the children that are coming spirit showing me the difference between what a child feels in their daily waking life what a child experiences when they've got their house in order when the future is beautiful versus what a child feels when we haven't done the work and they've got to be born into chaos devil energy someone's determined to bring heaven on earth into their own life knowing it's going to resonate out and knowing on some level that it's going to bring wish fulfillment 
for lots and lots of people because there's so much power here with the hermit and the high priestess. You are a devil conqueror, whether those devils are maybe in yourself or in others. And with this much power, you can take on other people's devils, pull the energy from them magnetically and transmute energy that they would never be able to transmute themselves. So there's something like the Hayoka about you where you can take on another persona, which literally means you really do become that energy temporarily mind because you can come back to your higher self, right? This is like someone abseiling off a cliff. It looks to everyone around them like they haven't got a rope, but they've got a rope and they're gonna get back up to the top, to the sable land. But part of your job is being the Hayoka, being the sacred clown, having to go into energies temporarily, maybe even triggering people to give you that energy across the table for them to throw metaphysical energy across at you so you can take it I'm getting an angel that looks like a devil. You can take that energy that they could only flow to you if you were in this temporary, shape-shifty energy, Hayoka energy. You take their pain. You take their anguish. You take a lot of things that they wouldn't be able to process themselves because you're happy to do that. I'm hearing true divinity doesn't need to take credit. True divinity does what needs to be done. True divinity is happy to look like the opposite to move the energy quickly. True divinity is happy to look like a crazy clown, a moron, angry, whatever spirit tells them to do. They will send out that energy so that they can release other people from the burden of carrying any energy that's on a similar frequency. Done. Page of pentacles, new physical doorway created through passion, inspiration, loyalty to what you represent because you don't get to the page of wands level, creating portals through your passion without knowing what you represent with the ace of wands and with this double full energy. This is a beautiful double fresh start. That's what I'm getting here. 201 on my clock. So there's that energy of two becoming one again. Okay, doubling up your power, doubling up the power of your guidance system. And there's something here about being astute. I'm getting the word astute. Some people are so astute they can afford to look crazy because they're doing things from a divine level. They're seeing from the top down, from broader perspective, and not from the bottom up, right? So there's something about you being able, they're giving me feral cherub, which is the phrase I use for me and my little feral cherubs who've had awful childhoods or whatever, but they understand the human condition because of it. So we have to be warriors in the garden, right? And they're giving me this energy, like sometimes you can seem naughty, sometimes you can seem bad because you've got a sneaky plan with this seven of swords. And your sneaky plan is to get people's energy moving and you don't even know consciously what you're doing when you're doing it with the full energy. You're just following how you feel, having faith that you are a good person, having faith that you're such a good person, that you can afford to look naughty, you can afford to look like the opposite to help people with their shamanic, energetic ways you're a little naughty one because you let God guide you, right? In the best of ways. You're naughty for all the right reasons because you want to help people tear their way through the fabric of reality and get to the next stage, okay? So you're happy to... This is a happy scapegoat energy. I'm getting this energy of someone who is happy to kind of look like the bad guy, take on that energy. I'm getting uh, the lyrics. If I could find my reasoning, I'd play to lose, right? No doubt. It's my life, don't you forget. Some people are that shamanic. Okay, let's go and see what's coming out. What have we got? Ooh, poodle energy. Okay, so someone's strutting their stuff in love. This could be about you zhuzhing yourself up, getting yourself back to the higher self because I feel like you've just been through it. I'm getting this and you've just been spit out of a sequence and you need to rebuild and regroup yourself up to your majesty. This will be easy for you. This will be quick for you. I'm also getting French energies, Parisian energies, French food, French music, ooh la la kind of energies coming through. We've got believe twice. So again, there's that energy of that doubling up of power, believing twice, knowing is stronger than belief. And if two people know, their consciousnesses can join together and be way more powerful, okay? That'll be relevant to somebody, but it's also relevant to you using two guidance systems. This could be relevant to where you're from. You might want to go the pagan way and also go the Catholic way. You might want to go the Hindu way. And also, they're giving me Luciferian way, right? There's all different ways for people to connect with source energy. And they're giving me, you, you've got this double, double entendre way of doing it, right? You've got this woven way of doing it. So 
interesting stuff here crystal clear you know where you stand crystal clear energy recalibrating i'm seeing a militant compass regaining its bearings knowing what direction it's going in and i'm feeling the running energy soldier energy you could be singing while you run i'm getting this is my rifle this is my gun right i'm hearing army songs being sung so someone's joyfully getting into the swing of something when it comes to being tough yeah mixing toughness with fun this is what we're doing baby alchemy 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 okay what have we got the castle there we go building castles in the sky believing in the divine realm here because this is coming out on this ace of cups in a beautiful way that crown chakra tuning back into the castle of the soul tuning back into the palace of the soul and believing and knowing in your supreme angelic royal valuable precious priceless status i'm going to leave it there because i feel like this is gorgeous for somebody my oh my have you done a lot of work on this earth plane and i'm getting that energy of elegua okay like in voodoo where someone can peek through and there's a mischievous energy with you that's what i'm going to say mischievousness let's pull a rune and we'll see what's going on Ooh, yes, we've got the counter. Some people call it Kanaz. It's basically the letter C and the letter K combined. And it's a fiery energy. It's being the illuminated one. It's being illuminated. I'm feeling the energy of a big, big torch, a big flame being lit here. And that big wand that you've been holding on to for so long. Ooh, what they're telling me is you've been holding this wand for so long and now moving into your next beautiful phase, the wand is being lit with the most powerful, powerful flame. Stand in the light of that flame. You are your own guide and it really feels to me like your guidance system is blending in with someone else's, something else's. Let me know in the comments if it makes sense to you guys. The doubling up energy, wish fulfillment is inevitable because you hold that frequency palatial one. I love you guys. Golden bunnies, initiates. Love ya. Mwah.